Hi everyone, I just want to start by saying thank you so much for watching my videos and for all the new subscriptions. Your support really motivates me to keep creating and sharing more content with you, I truly appreciate it. In today's episode, I'll try to show you the most reliable I.O. module that I've been using for more than half a year in an industrial application. It's part of my own project for monitoring ESD connections on a production line. Waveshare is a company well known for its professional and reliable products. Their products stand out with very high build quality and attention to detail, which makes them a trusted choice for both engineers and hobbyists. Waveshare offers everything from simple entry-level boards that are perfect for learning and quick prototyping, up to very powerful platforms designed for demanding AI and industrial applications. Their portfolio also includes AI cameras, PO modules, carrier boards, and components dedicated to robotics. This range allows you to select exactly the right hardware for your project, whether it's a small edge AI application, a robotics prototype, or a high-performance industrial system. Now, let's get back to our IR Modbus TCP module, which I'd like to talk about in more detail in the rest of this episode. Waveshare offers a wide range of Modbus modules, starting from simple digital input and output boards, up to high-power relay modules capable of handling 30 amperes, as well as analog signal converters for precise measurements. At the moment, I'm using a module with both Modbus TCP and RTU interfaces, along with a 12-bit analog to digital converter that communicates via Modbus RTU. These modules are really versatile and reliable, making them ideal for industrial projects and custom monitoring systems. This is an industrial eight-channel relay module controlled via Ethernet, supporting Modbus RTU and TCP with PO power supply. It has features like flash-on, off timing, digital input linkage, and MQTT control. The module includes optocoupler isolation, high-quality relays, and a rail-mount ABS case, suitable for industrial automation projects. The module supports configuration through both software and a web browser. It can obtain a dynamic IP via DHCP and connect to a domain name server using the DNS protocol, making network setup flexible and straightforward. It can be powered in three ways, via a DC power plug, a screw terminal supporting 7 to 36 volts DC, or through a PO port. The module supports both passive dry and active wet digital inputs with bidirectional optocoupler isolation for safety. It has multiple LED indicators, making it easy to monitor the operating status. Each relay channel can be independently configured, allowing multiple control modes for different automation scenarios. The onboard relays are rated up to 10 op pairs at to 50 volts AC or 30 volts DC, so they can directly control home appliances or devices below 30 volts DC. Waveshare provides full documentation for this module on their wiki. The documentation is very detailed, covering hardware specifications, wiring instructions, software setup, and examples, making it easy to get started and integrate the module into your projects. Now, let's connect our Modbus TCP module to our home or office network. For power, I'm using a 12 volt DC adapter from an external hard drive. Next, we go to the software section where the manufacturer provides programs for full configuration of the module. Here we have SSCOM, a software tool used for serial communication. It allows you to send and receive data through the module's serial interface, test commands, and monitor responses in real time. It's very useful for checking if the module is working correctly and for debugging Modbus communication. The second program is Modbus Poll. This software is used to test and monitor Modbus communication. It allows you to read and write data to the module, simulate Modbus masters or slaves, and verify that all commands and channels are working correctly. Vercom is a dedicated software from Waveshare designed for configuring and testing the Modbus POETH Relay B module. It allows you to easily set device parameters such as IP address, operating mode TCP server, communication protocol Modbus RTU or TCP, and Modbus gateway type the recommended type is non-storage. The software also lets you apply and activate new settings on the device, making configuration straightforward and user-friendly. 
The module communicates over the network using TCP, UDP, but if you want to use it with software designed for serial ports, you can create a virtual serial port. By installing the virtual serial driver and running Vercom, the software creates a virtual COM port that links to the module. This allows your serial-based programs to send and receive data through the module as if it were a regular serial device. If you don't need this functionality, you can skip this step. The module also features a web interface, allowing you to configure and monitor it directly through a browser without installing additional software. Now let's move on to configuring the module to work with Home Assistant. We start by downloading and running Vercom. If everything is connected correctly, the module will be automatically detected and shown in the device tab, even though its default IP address is outside of our local network. Now we move on to the configuration. We can either assign an IP address automatically using DHCP or set it manually. In my case, I checked which IP was free in my network and set it as static, and I also changed the gateway. After that, I switched the protocol to TCP, which uses communication port 502. Next, we click on Modify Settings to save the configuration. Then we select the module again and choose to restart the device. We can now see that the module has appeared with the new parameters. It's ready to communicate with Home Assistant. To check if everything is working correctly, we can use Modbus Bold first, select the previously defined IP address and port 502, then choose to read the relay status using function 0 by 01, set the address to 0, and read the next 8 registers. Next, go to the function menu to control the relays and select function 15. Right coils, in the newly opened window, toggle the relay, and on the left you can see that its status has changed to active. Another Modbus function that allows you to trigger a single relay individually is the right single coil function, which has the number 5. To establish Modbus TCP communication with the WaveShare Relay module, you just need to add this code to your configuration.yml. In this example, we are only controlling the first relay. Later, you can extend the configuration to include additional relays. Here we define our Modbus TCP device with its IP and port. In the switches section, we set up relay 1 with slave ID 1 and address 0. Now it's available in Home Assistant and ready to control after restart the server. Next, we add the relay 1 entity to our test dashboard and check if it works. You should hear the relay click and the blue LED will light up to indicate the relay output is active. The final step is adding the first input state to Home Assistant. The code is similar, but here we define a binary sensor to read a discrete input. We set the name input underscore zero, specify the type as discrete underscore input, set the scan interval, slave ID, and address. This allows Home Assistant to monitor the state of the first input. We add the created input entity to the dashboard and test it by connecting the DI1 terminal to DGND. This allows us to verify that the input state is correctly detected in Home Assistant. I connected the jumper, so the input is now active. Now I'll disconnect it to check if the entity on the dashboard updates its state accordingly. In today's video, we explored the WaveShare Modbus Poet Relay module, explaining all its features. We set up Modbus TCP communication and added relay and input entities to the Home Assistant dashboard. This setup opens up many possibilities, not only for home automation, but also for industrial projects allowing us to control relays and monitor inputs directly from Home Assistant. Thank you for watching the video until the end.
If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you decide to get this module, you can support the channel by purchasing it through the links below the video. It would be greatly appreciated.